chickens were just baby when we won the E.T. Ignite Grant last spring. So they had to stay in the brooder in our classroom until May. One of my dad's co-workers at Ace Hardware designed and built a chicken tractor and donated it to our project. This is where we kept our first five Delawares when they got too big for our brooder. They loved it outside here on the grass and all the students at West Penn had finally got to meet them. After we won the grant, we purchased a chicken coop and ran run from a Ducktown man who built coops. One day he delivered it to us. To us so was so exciting, but that time we had thirteen more chick chicks than chicks we had raised that were ready to leave the brooder. We couldn't wait to move our flock into their new home. During May, we researched and planned a food plot for the Bob White quail. We were, we would purchase, we would be purchasing in September. Miss Pace's husband and one of his friends plowed and then fertilized and planted a food plot on our campus, full of flowers and grasses that the, the quail liked to eat. Last summer, Miss Pace ordered a hundred adult Bob White quail from the man in Jasper. He said the quail will be fully grown in late September, ready for us to release onto our nature trail. <laughs> on September 22nd, we released our Bob Whites into the woods on our nature trail. We aimed the boxes toward the stream so they would be able to find their new home's water source. We also scattered some scratch feed around the woods so they would have some food. Miss Pace also Mr. Pace also built and set up a curry feeder in the woods and filled it full of milo for the quail to eat. Every day we gather fresh food from our lunchroom to serve to our Delaware chickens. They are getting so healthy. Our hens began laying in early September. First they only laid two eggs a day, then three a day, then five, and now around eight hens are laying an egg per day. Next spring, our plan is to hatch chicks from some of our eggs. We want to compare the difference in hatching the eggs in an incubator to a mother hen sit, setting on a nest. We can't wait to see the results. One of the challenges we faced was teaching our chickens how to move from the coop to to the run throughout a tunnel connecting the two areas. Another challenge was teaching the younger kids how to feed mealworms and grass to the chickens. They were afraid the chickens would peck them. Also, keeping the grass cutters from weed, weed eating and mowing our vegetable gardens and the quail food plot. This place had to make signs to keep everything safe. Some of our successes include being able to share our chickens with all of our West Penn students using the chicken tractor and placing the coop in certain, certain central locations. Our students love the chickens. Some of our interesting experiences were catching some of the chickens when Mrs. Pace accidentally left the door open to the run and planning in the STEM lab to design and print on our 3D printer a leg brace for one of the hens whose leg is growing a little crooked. We are donating the egg tree gathered to our cafeteria. You tell me what are you going to make with the egg today? For breakfast, we're going to make some boiled eggs. And for lunch, we're going to make out some egg salad. Thank you. Very soon, we will begin donating some of our eggs to Feed Family, our local food bank here in Blue Ridge. Hi, I'm Mr. Lucas Roof. I'm the principal of West Fannin Elementary School and. I just want to say thank you to ETC for the ETC Ignite grant for uh, making what we, we've done here with our quail habitat and with our chickens possible. And I want to say thank you for teachers like Miss Mary Jean Pace uh, that make this possible for the students as well. And I want to say thank you to the students. Um, what you've done for us, uh, Miss Pace is able to take the kids and when it comes time to study life cycles, she doesn't just study them uh, in a workbook or uh, out of a textbook. She's able to take the kids out into the real world and explore uh, the life cycles with the whole entire life cycle of a chicken uh, when it comes to studying math. 
Uh, we're not just studying out of a workbook. We're able to to go outside and study through data collection, and and this would not all be possible without uh, what ETC has provided for us here. So uh, again, thank you. The students and I are having fun and are so thankful to ETC and the Harrison Foundation for their generosity in helping make our organic poultry project a success. Thank you, ETC!